In this video, you'll learn how to set up a split screen view for a local co-op. We'll also talk about how to control multiple playable characters separately. In short, you need to use variables or resources instead of hard-coded input actions to control characters. You need to create a viewport in a viewport container for each player. You need to put your game level as a child of the first viewport. Then you create one camera in each viewport to render different views of your game level. Viewports have a world property that controls what they render. You need to share the first viewport's world with other viewports for every view to display the same level. Finally, to control the different cameras, you attach remote transform nodes to the characters and make them target the cameras. That's all the steps. Now we'll go over each in detail, but first you can find the fully open source demo and a recap for this video in our repository. In this demo, I have a sample level with two players right there. Uh, the first thing we want to do is ensure that each player has separate controls for their character. So the default way you would code a character is something like this. You would call input dot get axis, for example, or is action just pressed, um, and you would pass the input action, you would hard code it. But this only allows for one player to control the character. Instead, we want to turn these into variables, and we want to give each player different input actions. To do this, what I like to do is to create a resource. So I'll go in my character folder here, and I created one called playercontrols.gd. Uh, it's a very simple resource, and this one has an index for the player and the input actions right there. And you can see uh, by default they are called player one, move left, etc. Now the next thing to do is to go to your project settings and to create the input actions in question, right? So I have some for the first player and I have some for the second player. I already went ahead and created two resources with my player controls. You can see them in the inspector. The first one uses the default values and the second one uses the player two input actions. Then we plug them into our character. So the way we do that is by creating a new variable, you can see here, that you're going to plug in in the editor directly in your level. So if I go to my level scene, and I select the first player, it has the player one control file, and the second player has the player two controls. And finally, back to the player script, we need to remove these hard-coded input actions with controls.move left, uh, controls.move right is going to be the second, and finally controls.jump, controls.jump, and I'm going to copy and paste it right below. This is how you allow controlling the two characters. So if I play my level now, I'm going to move both characters into the view, and you can see that I can control them separately. Let's create our split screen view. So I'm going to start with a plain node at the top for my game. It's going to have the code that manages the split screen. And then as a child of that, we want to start with a viewport container. And as a child of the viewport container, we want a viewport node. The viewport container's role is to directly display the rendered uh, viewport texture to the screen. And the viewport takes care of the rendering. On the viewport node, because this is a 2D game, I need to go to rendering in the inspector and set the usage to 2D. But if you're working with 3D, you just set the usage to, to 3D and it'll work. All right, and inside our viewport, we need something to render. In this case, it's going to be our game level. Note that it's going to work with any level, any game. Okay, uh, we need to do one last thing on the viewport node. We need to set the size because it's zero, zero. Uh, and I'm going to go with half the screen size, so 960 by 1080, right? From there, um, we're going to create a copy of that. So you can select this and press Control D for a second viewport container. Uh, and in this one, I'm going to remove the level. And now I want my two containers to exist side by side, uh, to be one on the left, one on the right. And one way we can make this easy is using an HBox container. So I select my game node and create a new HBox container node that I'm going to put at the top. I'm going to put my two viewport containers as children of this, right? So you can see they are aligned horizontally. Um, 
and one is going to take the left half of the screen and one takes the right half. You can notice that one starts to render the view and the other is empty. This is normal. We're going to use code to share the level from this viewport to the one on the right. The next step is to add cameras to each of the viewports to uh, follow one of the players. So I'm going to select the first viewport and create a camera 2D node. In the inspector, I make it current so that it does uh, show the view there. And I'm going to, in the scene dock, select it, press Ctrl C to copy the node and Ctrl V to paste it as a child of the other viewport. And you can see uh, the pink outline render in there. Note one important thing. Notice how we separate the level. We have it in a scene and we uh, put it inside of the game. It's because once you are working uh, inside of viewports, it's pretty difficult to move things and to edit your level. So it's much better to have a separate scene. It's also much better to be able to unload and load different levels. Uh, what we want to do with the cameras is we want something to control them. We want them to follow the players. And one way we can do that is using remote transform nodes. So if I make my levels content editable, I can find the players in there and we could add remote transform 2D nodes as children of this and push the position of the player to each camera like this. But instead, I prefer to avoid editable children because you can lose data by doing this. You can get the players from code more reliably and generate those remote transform 2D nodes this way. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to add a script to my game node. And in there, um, we're going to start with a data structure uh, where we're going to be able to just get the viewports and the players and the cameras. Uh, so I like to do something like this, right? I'm going to have a dictionary representing all the nodes related to the players. So for player one, for example, I can do something like this. The viewport is going to be, I'm going to click and drag the viewport in there, right? And put a dollar sign in front. Uh, the camera is going to be this node, uh, snap. Uh, I can drag and drop it onto the script view. And while the player node, I have to go um, find it. You would instantiate them from code in a complete game. But for this demo, we're going to keep things simple. So the first player, I get the viewport node, the camera node, and the player node. And I'm going to copy and paste this uh, for the second player and modify the nodes. So the viewport is going to be viewport container 2 slash viewport. Uh, same thing for the camera, viewport container 2 slash viewport slash camera 2D. And the player is going to be inside of the first viewport container, inside of the level. It's just called player 2 instead of player 1. We can run our scene. And you will see that we only have one view rendering. And the other is empty. So we need to share the data here, the game level, from the first viewport to the second viewport. And we can do it like so. I'm going to define the ready function. And I'm going to say uh, player 2, the um, world 2D of the viewport is equal to player 1's um, viewport world 2D. The world is what the viewport sees and renders. And so it's automatically the nodes that are uh, present as children of the viewport. Now, if you want multiple views of the same game level, you can share it by sharing the world 2D object like so. And so you could do the same to have three or four players uh, split screen views. With this already, you can press F6 to play the scene and you're going to see two different views. Now, the second viewport uh, its camera is positioned at the same place as the first viewport's camera. And we're going to now uh, snap the cameras to the characters. The way we do that in the ready function is we're going to loop over these two players we have here, add a remote transform as a child of the player node and make it target the corresponding camera. So we, we can do this uh, like that for node in uh, players.values. So uh, node here will first be equal to this first dictionary here and then to the second dictionary. We're going to do this. We're going to create a remote transform node. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a remote transform 2D node. 
And we're going to set the remote path of the remote transform to the camera's path. So we go node.camera.get path like this. And then we can add this remote transform node as a child of the player. So node.player.addChild, and we're going to add the remote transform. And as soon as we do that, when we play the game, the cameras now follow the corresponding character. The last little thing we have is the gap between the two viewports, and we can remedy that by selecting our HBox container. In the inspector, we go to theme overrides, constants, separation, we set it to zero. And we can add a little something in between, perhaps if you want a line to clearly separate the two views, we can add a color uh, rectangle node in there. I'm going to place it between the viewport containers and go to rect min size x. I'm going to make it 10 pixels wide. And you can see now we have a, a line in there and you can change the color using the inspector. Uh, it makes it a bit easier to see the two views and that these are controlled by two different characters. And this is how you make a split screen co-op game in Godot. This video and open source demo is sponsored by our courses. If you're a beginner, you will love Learn to Code from Zero with Godot. It's a complete course to get you started with game development with tons of lessons and cool interactive practices. If you're more experienced, then Godot Node Essentials is for you. It's the biggest knowledge base about all the things you can do with Godot's nodes. You'll find the links in the video description.